from high school filmmaking to film school, from his web series to his independent production company, MSI Films. We're talking with Mark Stewart Iverson today about his journey in filmmaking and his award-winning, out-of-the-box, faith-based film, For Profit. But first, can I ask you a favor? Would you please follow this podcast right now on your podcast player so you don't miss an episode? And if you think others would be interested in listening, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That will really help us get off to a strong start with this new podcast. This is the Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast, helping filmmakers who share a Christian worldview stay in touch, informed, and inspired. Quiet on set. Rolling. Your hosts, Jeffrey and Jacqueline Witt. Welcome to the Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast, where we talk to and learn from filmmakers with a Christian worldview. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacqueline. And today we're talking with Mark Stewart Iverson. Upon graduating from UCLA Film School, Mark Stewart Iverson co-created, co-wrote, and co-directed Hulu's former number one web series, Dorm Life. The hit comedy show racked up three Webby Awards, two Streamy nominations, and two W3 Gold Awards. After a spiritual transformation, Mark founded MSI Films with the production of his original screenplay, the award-winning For Profit, marking his feature directorial debut. Mark currently serves as the creative producer for the sustainability docuseries Rivers Are Life on the Weather Channel, having produced 16 episodes in eight countries across five continents. Welcome, Mark. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. So you and I got connected through a film festival, not a Christian film festival. And actually, we didn't even get to meet in person at the festival. It was an right. online kind of meeting because you had your film for profit in the festival and I had That's one right. of my screenplays in the festival. And so as a festival participant, I got to watch the movies. So I got to see for profit, which is not yet released at the time of us recording this. And so I got to be one of the first viewers, and I'm so excited about that. And I loved it, and I started talking about it on my Facebook, and then I yes. guess that's how you saw that I was excited about your work. And so then we connected. Since then, we've actually had you be one of our instructors with Family Friendly Screenwriting Academy. You did a, mm -hmm. a boot camp. But before we get into that stuff, let's back up. How did you even get into film? How did you get to the point of for-profit? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it was the Las Vegas International Film Festival. That was yes. great. Yeah, so for-profit is my directorial debut, my first big feature film. Yeah, it took a while. It took a while to get my first feature off the ground. I'd been working on trying to get my first feature going for almost a decade. I started making movies pretty early on, about 15, 16, 17, late high school. I caught the bug and got really, really into it. I was really blessed in that I had great teachers growing up that were very enthusiastic and supportive about creativity, about writing, about expressing yourself, uh, junior high and high school. And then when I got into high school, I started, yeah, to just mess around with writing and poetry and prose. And then I did a little commercial fun little project for an English class. And we had to shoot something with a little video camera. And I got really into it. I got really into it. And it, and I got <laughs> really excited. And certainly, even when I look back, you know, of all the little commercials that everybody did, mine was certainly the highest production value because I really got into it. And then I started to just express myself with writing in screenplay formats and started to realize, okay, I could just shoot these things. And I had really funny friends around me and great people around me, creative people. I had a buddy of mine who was really into photography, so I had him shoot my next project. And then I had another friend of mine who was really funny. I had him act along with me in the project. And I wrote a little like rom-com 40-minute movie. And we did that in junior year of high school. And then senior year of high school, I did a full two-hour feature was technically, I guess, my first feature, but we're not going to talk about that because it was not <laughs> that great in production. But, but it was great. I, I wrote the whole thing. I edited it all myself. I directed it. It took the whole year on weekends and nights to, to shoot it. And I finished it. And that was mm -hmm. the moment where I convinced everybody where I actually finished it. I convinced my family. I convinced my friends. It was very difficult to finish because a lot of my friends who had started with the project 
were not excited about continuing the project six, they eight months down the road. They did not have the passion you had. They did not have the passion. <laughs> they did not have the vision, but I did. And so I kept with it. I finished it. I had a premiere. We made little DVDs. Like I had a soundtrack. We did it all. And that was the moment where I really convinced everybody, okay, no, this is, this is my future. During that whole time, I you know, started applying to film schools. I grew up outside Chicago. And so I thought about staying around Chicago. I had some friends in some film schools in Chicago and doing film work in Chicago. But I really wanted to go to one of the coasts and, and uh, New York or L.A. And so I applied to a lot of big schools and I got into UCLA. And so I went to, to UCLA and went out to L.A. and did that for four years at school there. And then I did another about five years living around L.A. and doing the L.A thing. And at that point at school, I got into comedy. I was in a sketch group. It was a oh, fun. comedy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And that's, <laughs> that's where, you know, everything I'd done before that, people were certainly like, oh, wow, you, like you said, you had the vision, you actually completed it. You really know how to follow through. But when I started doing the comedy, that's when I started to actually feel like the audience was there for me because I started to actually get genuine good reactions. We had a big student comedy troupe that started at UCLA and then we continued after and we did a bunch of work together after for many years. But it was a big student show. It was 5,000 people show that we would do nice, every year. Nice. Yeah, student show, but you know, obviously alumni were there, teachers, professors, you know, it was a big community event and it was... Um, it was like a uh, talent show for, for musical talent show, but then we were the comedy troupe in between and we did videos and live sketches and, and I was the filmmaker of the team. And so I was you know, shooting, directing, editing, I acting a little bit, but I'd have 5,000 people to like say, okay, is this good or not? And every year we got better and better and better. And every year we had really, really, really great reactions. And People would come up to me after and, nice. and I, like I started to get people coming up to me who wanted to work with me because they're like, that was actually fantastic. It made me laugh out loud. I couldn't believe how good that was. And that's when I started to realize, okay, yeah, no, I think I can do this really. Like it's not just that I can complete a project, but I actually think there's an right. audience there for my work. And yeah, so I kept the comedy thing going for a long time. And after college, we did a web series back when it was called web series, when people were still questioning mm -hmm. whether or not people would watch <laughs> things online. But uh, we did two seasons of a web series and that was pretty successful, you know, successful in, in those terms in like 2010, 2011 terms. We had, you know, good viewership. We got onto Hulu before Hulu became big Hulu, but it was, it, we were like with our number one show for many years. It was a college show. It was about living in a dorm mockumentary on a dorm floor. So we got a good, <laughs> yeah, we really, it really was great. It was where I really learned how to work with actors. I was kind of my grad school, I kind of say. I DP'd the first season, so I did everything. Directed was one of the writers. I acted in a couple episodes. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to be the, the project that led into my career, but it kind of fell apart and the group kind of broke up and the producers who funded the project were, um, they fell out of love with it. They didn't make enough money with it. And then they tried to get a third season going. They couldn't really make it into regular television. And so it kind of petered out over years and and, mm -hmm. and that was when I was like, okay, you know what? I need to start my own company. I need to do my own thing. I need to not just be reliant on other producers, even a group of, of other creatives. I need to write my own work. So that was when I started like, all right, I need to make a feature film. And then, yeah, it took, it took me a long time. I wrote a bunch of scripts, actually, that I tried to get off the ground. I wrote uh, kind of my own version of a little bit of a horror thing that everyone hated the script. Um, I wrote a, a sports dramedy that people liked the script and that was good to go, but I could only raise half the money and I didn't want to, I didn't want to, to do it not properly. And then I had another movie that I was working on with another writing team and that creatively we kind of fell apart on. And so that I had enough money for, but creatively it didn't work out. And then I wrote another script that I just really couldn't get people behind. So I wrote four or five scripts trying to get something going. And then finally, um, and I really felt in prayer, you know, I spent so many years trying to get all these other projects going. And then finally I had this idea for, for profit, profit like Moses for profit, you know, uh, it's a play mm -hmm. on words. Um, yeah. and yeah. it was something that just kind of came into my heart and I wrote the script and people really responded to it. And then I started raising money for it and it, it all came together. You know, it was one of those things where it just felt like God was like, all right, you want to make a feature film? This is the one. And, yeah. um, and well, it took many and years, those... but finally got it going. Yeah. 
with those other scripts that you wrote leading up to that one, they were probably a really great learning opportunity, growing oh, opportunity, yeah. you know, because every time you write a script, you learn something and then you apply that to your next script. So yes. your first script and your fifth script are not going to look the same, you know, even just from a writing perspective. And they might all be great, but you learn so much each time you write, right? And then you apply yes. that. And so you're accumulating 100%. your skills as you're writing. Congratulations with getting the funding and getting the production done and the awards that you're winning. Do you, you even know how many awards you've won or have you lost count by now? <laughs> I had to count it up for the distributor. So we did lock in a distribution deal, which was great. And we're putting the movie out in a couple of months. We haven't set an exact date yet. We did the festivals for a little over a year. I think we were official selections for like 15 or 16 festivals. And then we won, I know it was over 20 awards technically, and then a bunch of other nominations as well. And some of those are smaller boutique festivals, and some of them are much larger. Some of them are faith-centric. Some of them are not, like the Las Vegas one. Mm -hmm. We won the faith category, but it wasn't a faith-centric festival. And it also, what was great about that, one of my actresses, the woman who played the angel, who is fantastic in the film, her name is Valentina Garcia. Yeah. She's a lead in the film, but she won the Best Supporting Actor across all genres for that wow. festival. Wow. Um, so that was, yeah. That. Was That's amazing. One. Yeah, that, that was really good. That was one of those times where I was like, okay, yeah, this is working as a film, not just yeah. in the genre of faith. There was another, like uh, the Canadian International Comedy Festival, not faith at all. We got into that. We didn't mm -hmm. win any awards, but we got into it, which was like, oh, okay, great. The yeah. comedy's really working yeah. besides the genre elements. So yeah, the festival route was great. We not only connecting with other great filmmakers and other writers, and getting good feedback, but it really showcased that, yeah, the film was working and it was uh, something that there's going to be an audience for it. And so, yeah, it was festivals really, really are exciting. really good for that. Festivals yeah. can be a great place to kind of test and see where things are at. You know, it's Absolutely. interesting when I think about like the Las Vegas Festival being a secular festival and they have a faith category. I mean, they don't specify which faith. It could have been any faith, right? Like, yeah, it, technically. it didn't specify, you know, Christian. And so, right. yeah, it could have been up against people that have Sikh projects or Hindu or Islam. Like, I mean, you pick whichever faith or religion, it would have been all in that category. Um, right. What I love, I'm so glad that your actress won so many awards for her role because the movie she would did. not <laughs> have been the same without her. Man, she nailed it. It was yeah. so good. Thanks. Yes, she's yeah. great. She did. She did. Yes. Hey actors, need more clips to broaden your spectrum? Or maybe you're just getting started and you're stuck in the catch-22 of needing work to get a reel, but needing a reel to get work. I'm Jacqueline Witt, an award-winning screenwriter, and I'm running a 90-minute screenwriting workshop on April 18th to guide you through the process of writing your own one-minute demo reel. Learn how to write to your acting strengths and how to capitalize on your existing resources. Go to fafassociation.com and look under the workshops tab to sign up now. That's fafassociation.com. I'm looking forward to our listeners getting a chance to see this because we have, and we've already said we loved it. But one of the things, well, two things. First of all, I believe you said this is your first feature, but it yes. doesn't look like a first feature. No, it does so not look like while a first. Jacqueline mentioned, you know, <laughs> having written several <laughs> scripts brings you to that point yep. where it doesn't look like your first script because it's not. The same is true with your directing and, and producing, obviously, because this is not a, a first attempt looking movie. And the second thing I'll say is it is out of the box. The concept, yes. the way it's filmed without giving away any more, that's important. It's not just a retake on something we've seen before. It's very uniquely portrayed and you pull it off very well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, a guy gets tasked by an angel to save his hometown. He's got the It's a Wonderful Life elements there, um, the spiritual realm elements. And then there's a demon character that's been latched onto him as well. So there's definitely, there's some high concepts going on there. And there's definitely, yeah, out of the box is a great way of explaining it. It is something, especially in the faith world, I think a lot of the, the films in that genre tend to be a little cookie cutter, a little A plus B equals C kind of formulaic. We've seen, you know, that kind of story before. Guy gets asked by an angel, you know, that kind of storyline. But, um, but yeah, we try to it's take not a unique, the same. It's not. Thank you. Yeah, I, we try to take a unique take on it. 
And that's actually, ironically, that's something that we had problems with some of the distributors at first because everybody would say, yeah, this is high production value. This is good. It's stories working. The angel's fantastic. You know, great film. Uh, we don't know. This isn't in. This isn't inside the box. This isn't. And there, we need to have it inside. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of distributors are like, but there's this box, and it yeah. needs to be in this box. And if yeah. it's not in this distributors box, distributors like supposed to, to do know? what what they know already works. They're not interested right, exactly. in trying something new. They want right. what already yeah. works that they have proven track record. This will sell. They're not yes. interested in trying something new to be like, well, let's give it a shot. Like- <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Not typically. And that's sometimes when there's bigger risk, there's bigger reward. Those are the ones that stand out in the end. Yeah. That's always been my pitch. Um, but it's also, I think one of the things that I learned with this process is that distributors are going to go where the audience goes. So if the audience, if people are responding to your film, then that's the most important thing. You know, the only reason Absolutely. why distributors distributors are going to respond where the audience goes. So they don't even have real opinions. Their job is not even have opinions. Their job is to be like, okay, this has worked before. This is like that. Okay, great. Yes, we'll we'll buy that movie. They're just waiting to hear what opinions are coming in. And so, and that's what happened with the festival route for us was like, okay, yeah, because we'd gone to a few distributors before we did festival. We had a couple of connections. We had a couple of meetings and just kind of seeing what the vibe was. And the vibe was definitely like, this is a great movie where it's not in the box. It's a little outside the box. We're not sure. And so we mm-hmm. went to the festivals and we're starting to get in. We got into a ton of them. We won all these yeah. awards. People really responded to the to the story, to the characters, to the performances. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, no. There's going to be an audience for this. Especially, yeah. I think, like you said, in the faith genre, I think that genre is so, it is really new. It really is. Like it's still finding mm-hmm. its feet. It's still trying to expand and try different things. And there are some that are a little more cookie cutter, a little more like, okay, this is how a faith movie goes. But then there's also newer stuff breaking out all the time that is like, oh, wow, I didn't think that was going to do very well. Or that maybe is lighter on the faith, but more like a regular movie, something that even like Sound of Freedom, where it's actually kind of light on the faith elements. The main character is a person of faith and there's a few discussions Mm -hmm. of some scripture. But the main thing that people responded to with that was the heartfelt nature of the subject matter and that the values and trying to help people and trying to help, you know, enslaved people, children. And so, you know, with my film, we're trying to do something in the sense of like trying to do a little something different and try to expand the genre a little bit and try to keep the storytelling high and the production value high and really making it a great film, still working within the faith genre, and yet being something that has something unique to it, has a little twist, has something that yeah. makes it its own thing. So, thank, I appreciate you guys. You know, you guys responding to the film has always been really, really great for me. I love that you guys love it. Oh, awesome! I think that one of the things that you know, this whole box thing of Christian film, it's as if the stories were all about coming to salvation. And so I think that where the out of the box, if you want to call it that kind of ideas come is where, well, what if the story isn't about coming to salvation? What if it's something else? And so for The Sound of Freedom, it wasn't about coming to salvation. It was just pursuing something that was already on God's heart. And so when we have stories to tell that, let's say marriage restoration or something like that, the characters themselves could be characters who believe in God and therefore there's a faith element brought in. But the story Mm -hmm. of reconciliation or restoration, like that is something that's on God's heart. So we don't have to necessarily get into the salvation message because it's kind of already baked in there. You know, Mm -hmm. like this is, we're doing life with God. And I I think that this is kind of where the faith-based industry is headed, is realizing that there's more to our faith than salvation, even though it's an important part, there's still so much more that we could right. tap into to share the heart of God. Yeah, yeah, Jacqueline, you're absolutely right. I've heard that same thing recently from a lot of producers and a lot of distributors in the faith world where they're like, yes, there is the classic man, woman coming to Jesus storyline in the faith world, but there's also just the story that hits the right values, that God is just a part of the world and it's not necessarily this person has the actual come to Jesus moment, but it's more that the values and the the morals and the world that is being portrayed is just working with a, a faith-centric person and trying to tell those stories too of just like, this is a story that is universal and spiritual and moral and has great values, 
but it's not necessarily, you don't have the actual maybe scene where the person says, yes, now I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I think the expanding of the genre is great where it's just like, oh, this is just hitting somebody in their heart if for a faith person, but it's not the exact story we've seen before. And I'm excited about the expansion of the genre. Definitely. I have a lot of my scripts that fit into that category where the character already has come to Jesus and now it's it's about walking out their faith. And yeah. I think that that's important. And it really does come down to who's your audience? Who are you mm -hmm. writing this for? Because if you're writing it for people who are already saved, we don't need to try to sell that message. They've already got it. Before we finish up this portion of our interview, I'd like to take a moment to invite you to go deeper with us in our discussion with Mark in part two, our exclusive members episode. We'll talk about his new project, Prodigal Sons, his experience with producing during the SAG strike, the importance of comedy across genres, and his specialty, mastering character-driven comedy in screenwriting. You can hear Mark's bonus episode and continue receiving these exclusive episodes going forward by becoming a supporting member. $5 a month helps support the production of this podcast and doubles the inspiring content you receive every single week. Sign up and get the first month free. You can become a supporting member or make a one-time donation at faffpodcast.com slash support. That's faffpodcast.com slash support. I think a, a big part of it is having the movie tell a story, not preach a sermon. I believe if the story is good, if it's, story, <laughs> if it's story centric, the message will be received. Not that we're not yeah. telling stories with a message, but we've got to remember the story has to support itself. It has to be a well-told story in order for the message to be heard. Yeah, 100%. When I would go to these festivals and do Q&As, the thing that I started to say that really resonated with people was, I think a lot of filmmakers in this genre, at least early on, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago especially, would say they're evangelical filmmaker or they're making evangelical films. And if you're doing that, if you're evangelizing, to evangelize is to preach to those who do not know God, who do not know the gospel. And in order to do that, you need to actually preach to them. But a lot of the films that are called evangelical are not made for people who don't already know the gospel. They're actually made for people who already do know the gospel. And they don't work many times because uh, like what you're saying, Jeff, the story isn't working, the themes are working, the preaching works, but you're preaching to the choir. And I think you need to actually go out Side the box. You need to go outside the choir. You need to turn around and talk to the congregation and be like, okay, yeah, no, I, I need to tell a great story that has great values and great morals and, and works in the characters and works in the production value too. And I think that's where we can really expand the genre and, and realize, okay, yeah, we can make movies that are great that reach people outside of the bubble. And I think that's a major goal for me, absolutely, yeah. in my filmmaking. I think also when we show stories where a person is walking out their faith, I think that is as much of a message because then yes. somebody who is maybe not a follower, they can get into the story because it's the character who, you know, it just happens that the character is somebody who believes in God. So, you know, they can watch that story and enjoy it. But then they also get to see what does it actually look like? to follow God, to walk with God. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that can create some stirring and some questions that would have its own value and not to be discounted. Because, I mean, think about how many times you watch a movie where the person, the main character or any of the characters even in the, the story, they don't have the same lifestyle you do. They don't have the same beliefs that you do. And maybe they have like a job that's completely different than what you would right. do with your life. Yeah. But you can enjoy it because the characters are interesting. The story is yeah. good. And so you're on board with watching and being entertained. And I think Absolutely. that we can do the same for people who aren't of faith, but we can include faith in our stories through our characters and just bring that reality uh, of walking out our faith into the stories so that people can see that's what it looks like. So that, you know, people yeah. that don't have God to lean on during hard times can see what it looks like when you do. And mm. and yes. learning how to have that struggle and, and humbling yourself through a learning process. You know, all of that is stuff that people can see that's how it works. And then that could touch yeah. their heart. Totally. Let's do it. Let's do it. Absolutely. You write a great script, I'll direct it. Boom. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. in. Love we'll it. do it. 
Okay, so I want to talk to you more about certain things that make uh, a script great. And so in our members-only portion, we're going to get into some more things on uh, screenwriting itself. And we'll hear more about your upcoming movie that you are working on. So before we close out this portion of the interview, I just want to ask, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Um. Yeah, just uh, we'll keep the word out as far as for profit when it's coming out. I'm really excited, obviously, about putting my first feature out. I'm really humbled and and blessed to be here talking to you guys. I'm so glad you guys have responded to my work. And it's been really wonderful working with you guys uh, now on the podcast and in the workshops and classes and, and the festival. And you guys are doing great work. And I'm just, uh, I'm, I am really just excited about the future of faith storytelling and storytellers in faith. And I'm really excited about where the genre is going and, and what we can do within it. And I think people like you guys, as well as me, I think I think we're on the right track as far as really trying to be story-centric and character-centric and making sure that we're telling great stories with great production value and it's working in a spiritual sense too. I'm mm-hmm. really excited about next steps and where my career is going and where everybody is going. We're really pleased to have you as part of our network and uh, part of our world, it has been mentioned that he has and is teaching classes for us. Classes related to adding comedy to your scripts. And as Jacqueline said, we're going to talk about that a little more in the second half. But it's very important, not just for over-the-top comedy type movies, but uh, adding levity to any script. Yes, absolutely. Do you have a fan page where somebody can go to follow your projects like for profit? Yeah, we have the pages for for profit, F O R P R O P H E T, for profit, profit like Moses, forprofitfilm.com, as well as on Facebook and Instagram with for profit, Instagram for profit film. Yeah, please check that. We're going to be expanding more uh, posts and socials and trailers and clips and teasers, all that very soon. And then my company's MSI Films my website, msifilms.com. And then you can look me up on Facebook and Instagram as well with MSI Films. Perfect. We'll have those links in our show notes. Thank you so much for this portion of the interview. I look forward to talking with you further in the next portion. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to the Faith and Family Filmmakers podcast. If you would like email reminders about newly released episodes and more, please sign up at faffpodcast.com slash email. That's faffpodcast.com slash email. Bringing filmmakers together for faith and family. That's a wrap.